Hi, everyone. Hi. What you just missed was Jennifer saying, <laughs> You're, you must be hydrated this week. Yes, I've been drinking water all week. What a difference. Yeah, so apparently I've taken 15 years off my face. <laughs> it's good, good to know. Plus, I have my, a very tight ponytail. Oh, that's what yeah. it is. <laughs> I'm wearing my hair down because last time I didn't do my hair and everybody said it looked better. So I figured oh, I just wouldn't do it today either. I think they were trying to make us feel better. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's not done. Whatever. All right. So you're watching this on April 24th. We're recording it on the Wednesday, which is the 22nd. And, um, you know, the purpose of us doing this every week is to keep everybody's spirits high. And <laughs> yeah. to, but we really, there's a few things we need to talk about before we start well, today. We're, and, s- we're still going to bring the noise. Yeah. But we're going to do... We can't, we, there's things that we just possibly, ha- we have to acknowledge that are going on because sure. it's a... Uh, it's really something, it's not in a good way. Something. Um, actually, it was Pam, our web developer, said, please stop 2020 and let me off. Yes, really. <laughs> Bring the gravel. So um, anybody that's been watching us. So I'm Kim. Oh, yeah. And I'm this Jennifer. Jen, Jen. We and, just jump right in. Yeah. And we're um, recording this podcast in our shop, in our mill, our woolen mill in Belfast, Prince Edward Island, where we're feeling safe. And well, yes, we're perfectly healthy. Yes, right now for sure. And uh, but as uh, people that have been watching us know, we're from Nova Scotia. Yes, Nova Scotia is the only way to describe it is reeling after this awful tragedy that by now has made the world news. I'm sure. Of I would think so. Yeah. it's unusual for Canadians to go on a rampage. Yes. So we're just acknowledging that that's, that's happening and uh, people that are close to us know people that were um, um, actually killed in the, in the incident and uh, it's just horrific in every way possible. And uh, it is the worst mass homicide in the history of our country, yes. entire country. Yes. And Nova Scotia is full of the sweetest people. Right. Like us. And it's a little tiny that's community where, we came where it from. started. Yeah, in a outside rural, Truro, where, yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's really, uh, it's really crazy, and we just our hearts go out to everybody over there who's uh, been directly affected by this. And I don't, I think it's fair to say that there's not anybody, probably, well, certainly in Nova Scotia, certainly in the Maritimes, and I would say in Canada, that's not somehow affected. Even me, who I always try to see the you know, positive things and try not to get down. I, after that, I was just like, well, for Pete's sakes, <laughs> yeah. this is really enough. This enough. is quite a year. Already, yeah. It's only April. Already. April's not even over. We thought yeah. January was long. April is like 10 years long. Yeah. So and it's showing on our face. <laughs> I mean, that's, every Great month is 10 water. years. That's what's happening. Yeah, the water's not going to fix it. <laughs> fix everything. Um, so we just, our hearts go out to the people that are, have been directly affected and the people that are affected by it. And, um, for sure, um, it, it's kind of, a, yeah, it's, it's, it gets to be a lot. Somebody did ask about our parents and right. so thank you. Our parents are fine. They've been barricaded in their home for two months now. Yes. <laughs> so they definitely weren't out, uh, and about that day. Yeah. So, or anywhere near that area really. It's about an hour outside, an hour and a half outside Halifax. So. Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, so that hugs, was interesting. Hugs to everybody, yeah, there. other blue nosers who are watching, yeah. we know how you feel. Mm-hmm. So, and then the farm update is not really any better. No. Yes, I mean, well, it's it's not not, not as not as uh, dramatic as all, as that for sure. But we don't have uh, we have a uh, bad news update. Do so, you want me to say? Yeah, you go ahead. Okay, well, because, <laughs> uh, so we went out to the barn a few days ago. I don't remember which day, Monday? No, no, I think it was Sunday. Su- Sunday. And Penelope had passed away. Yeah. In the barn. So mm-hmm. Penelope has had quite a medical history here on the farm because, of right. course, all of our animals are tagged so that we can identify and track them. Mm-hmm. They have their own little health records, just like you would when you mm-hmm. go through our hospital system. Yeah, we know every yeah. shot. Or and every... Uh, the truth is, you know, she had struggled since birth, had mm-hmm. been treated for a lot of different things, mm-hmm. and it is a little unusual for a sheep to respond that way after shearing. Mm-hmm. So she wasn't the most vigorous, robust 
specimen Mm -hmm. um, on the farm to begin with. And uh, we just don't know. Could have been an organ issue or something with her from birth. Or she didn't. They had, um, you know, like placental insufficiency during gestation that just Mm -hmm. sets them off on the wrong foot. Mm -hmm. I don't think she was a bottle lamb. No. Um, So it wouldn't be a colostrum issue. But there's definitely something in... uh, in the works that just wasn't going to give her a chance no. to really make it for the long term. So um, the good thing is, you know, she she died, I would assume, peacefully in the mm-hmm. pen with the other sheep. Mm-hmm. Thankfully not in my kitchen. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, she was just gone. So yeah. there, were, there was no... Uh, and, you know... It, this is, it's one thing about sheep. They're very stoic because I, you know, because you're a prey and when you're a sheep, you're a prey animal. So you can't let on like there's anything wrong. Right. So uh, often this happens is that it looks like they're rallying. And just the day before I was saying, well, she definitely looks better because she was, seemed to be fine. She, uh, sometimes if there's something wrong, if we get tipped off if there's something wrong, if they don't like run out of the barn with the rest of the flock when you open the door in the morning. And the day before I had said, well, this is good news. Where's Penelope? She just was part of the flock and went out. And then the next day we went into the barn and she was, uh, she didn't get it. She didn't get up. Mm. So, so that was the story of Penelope. She yeah. had a glorious week in the kitchen <laughs> yeah. and, uh, lived it up uh in there and then that was it so that's all the bad news so now we're going to go back to our normal jovial selves and act like everything's fine because that's what the purpose of this podcast is really and we're all depressed enough yeah yeah (laughs) without us going on about that and this is typically how maritimers deal with grief um we do sort of dance and sing through it all yeah pretty well i mean it's the irish weight thing is right. it a week when it's scottish have we had this conversation oh, before? we've had a conversation before because uh that was a big deal that wakes are not allowed in yeah PEI oh yeah the, the social isolation. calendar was yes. seriously truncated by yes. the um <laughs> the not gathering in large yes. groups we, we tend to celebrate lives lived yes rather than you know yeah lives lost yeah, yeah. that's in our culture yeah um and you will get up and almost roast the person yeah <laughs> tell <laughs> funny <laughs> stories yeah yeah i mean it's not as mean as when you roast somebody no 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 it's not mean it's tell you but talk just, about all the good things that they did yeah and good funny and stories. silly and yeah. what a character they were yeah. and that kind of thing so that's kind of how we deal with things so no offense to anybody who uh mourns differently but that's yeah. how in fact that's how I, we irish this, do it we some of the best jokes i've ever heard are at funerals you have heard at funerals. definitely yes <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, so, uh, so now we're going to talk about virtual midnight. <laughs> virtual midnight. Yes. So please, oh, people. Oh, mercy. Mercy me. Pay attention. Okay. <laughs> so, we're begging you. <laughs> so I put up this little thing saying, like, did everyone get the email? Nobody got the email, apparently. It seems. So like it seemed it. like nobody. So we do use, um, but even Jennifer Beale didn't get hers. So I do have to look at what's going on with her. Yeah. But, uh, well, I'm, I'm trying to look at what is going on with everybody. There was way too many people. It got too confusing. So yeah. if you think we ignored you, we just got overwhelmed. I was literally sending out links five minutes before we came okay. out to, to Knit Night. Okay. So. so if you've gone in and ordered from us, that does not mean you are on our email list. Right. Not at all. No. There are very strict spam laws in Canada. So unless mm-hmm. you clicked a button that said you want to receive emails at the time of your order, you are not on our email list. It right. doesn't matter how many times you've ordered from us. Right. You have to go into the box at the bottom of the website. And by the way, our mother has yet to get one. <laughs> Even though we've been trying to help her through this for three weeks. Are you sending it to her individually? Or? I'm not anymore. Oh, okay. mom, you're done. Okay. <laughs> if you can't figure out how to get the email, um, so She's, uh, she might her old email address might be in there because she changed. Email. I'm sure. Yeah, but yes, that could be the problem. Smart enough to go put the new one in. Okay, Mailchimp is. I'll I'm sure, check for you. Mom. I'm sure there are billions of users. Yes. 
email addresses. They're all getting their emails. Yeah. Our mother is not. Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering if that's a confusion, if people think because they've ordered from us that they're yeah. subscribed. You are not. We're not allowed to do that. We yeah. can't just take your information that you provided us for a different purpose mm-hmm. and then start spamming you. Yeah. <laughs> Which is it. good news for you, really. <laughs> but sure. you need to make sure. So you will have to go in and subscribe yeah. again. So just to give you an example, we have... I think we have 2,300 contacts in there, but there's only 1,300 subscribers. Yeah. And if you've unsubscribed for any reason, for any past, reason, by you're mistake, no longer subscribed. or you're cleaning your emails or whatever, you're no longer subscribed. Yeah. And one or two people that I checked had um, th- something on their, it said something on their, their profile that transactional emails only. So I think they've, they've actually said no right. marketing emails, right. which is a thing you can do. Yeah. But then they're but not then you're getting, not gonna get any emails. <laughs> so the only emails you're gonna get are the ones that say please reset your password yeah. or things yeah. that are ha- yeah. have to do with that. Not not emails. So but. if you've had an issue of any kind, please go in and enter your email in the blue box again. I'll show it again. Yeah. Because if you're not getting them, you're not in there. Yeah. It doesn't matter what we go in and try to do. Or you've unsubscribed. Yeah. Or, or you've something. Something. Yeah. Something like that. So try that, and we'll see how that goes. Mm-hmm. Now. Virtual Knit Night itself was a blast this week, too. Yes. It was really fun. Yes. Yeah. There is it's one really good group that oh, I okay. think I want to say about uh, <laughs> the <email laughs> that is that <clears throat> there's been a few people that have more than one type of email, right. too. So just make sure that you're, like, I would say almost everybody has a Gmail because right. you need a Gmail account to Do just go to the anything. bathroom yeah. any day, these yeah. days, it seems. But they don't always use a Gmail for for their personal their, for their emails like their personal mm-hmm. emails, and um, the other thing is where there was some of the emails that I answered requests for I didn't get my is that we put it in the uh, notification for the podcast yeah so if you don't scroll down in the notification the first thing that's on that notification is that the podcast has been right. released. But then after that, yeah. there's other things. I'm including them together because I figured you'd rather get one than several. Yes. So um, I had Ken look at his email note because he's on our Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's very helpful. So I think that uh, <laughs> some of the reason why it uh, yeah, was very helpful, but it was possible that this happened, is that right, <laughs> right, right when the notification for the podcast would scroll on your screen if you were looking on your, your mobile phone, <laughs> the picture of the cake showed up. <laughs> At the bottom, because the recipe for the virtual knit night was right under. So the notification with the details for the password of the podcast was just boring writing. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> letters. Four letters and numbers. On it. Boring. Yeah. And right under that, there was a cher- big cherry cake. Yeah. So Ken went, I don't see it. Oh, look at that cake. <laughs> I said, well, you just scrolled past it. <laughs> super helpful yes maybe so, i'll put it in i think i, I did i put like it in neon pink lettering yeah, yeah, this it time was, it okay. was okay mauve and pink not as exciting not as, as exciting cake, as the bunt cake with the big cherries <laughs> in it so i do love a good bunt yeah all right so we're just really this is all like we're just at the point where we can't possibly answer all the emails <laughs> anymore because i think we answered about 25 right that just reminded me of that movie. Sorry. Yeah. We, and we, we admit we gave up. If yeah. you haven't got assistance from us and sending us your email, we're sorry. Yeah. We're we going to have to do it again. <laughs> we just were like, ah, I can't do yeah. it. Just go put it in the box. We beg you. Because yeah. we'd love to see you there. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. We, by no means do we want anyone to get left out. Right. Um, the more the merrier. Anyway, it reminds me of that, my big fat Greek wedding when she, the, <laughs> the uptight mother brings the bunt. Oh. It's a bunt. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a really funny movie, Sean Toronto. I don't anyway. understand why that's funny. Because isn't the, it a bunt? It is a bunt, but the 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 mother of um, Tula it couldn't pronounce bunt. It's oh, kind of like B N D T is not if English is not your first language, oh. maybe not the easiest thing to pronounce. Oh, okay. Anyway, it was a joke in the movie. It was really right. funny. Okay. It's a bunt. It had to, had a to be, bunt. <laughs> you had to be there, I guess. Sorry, like a bunt. I want to watch it like that a bunt, now. like a baseball thing. No, I can't describe oh, it. No, we've been watching. Watch the movie. We've been watching movies like we watch. Both watch the Green Mile. This. This yeah, one. that's such uh, a yeah. good movie. That's a really good movie. It's a movie. long one if you've got some time to I, Yeah, unfortunately I started, I got the brilliant idea at five to nine that I should watch it. I had no idea it's three hours long. Yeah, three hours and six minutes, I think. So, but we've, we've uh, 
<laughs> We've had some fun re- reading the comments from last the last oh, podcast. Yeah. It's been great this week. It's hilarious. Yeah. And I have a little thing I, on the agenda about local sayings because I think okay. that's... First jobs was hilarious <laughs> enough, but so I think funny. we will go down a rabbit hole yeah. on local sayings. And from the Green Mile, there was one... That's, yeah, that's really okay. funny. That's fun. So we can do some other maritime local sayings at the same yeah. time. But I will say, uh, we're getting a lot of notes that are saying you really appreciate the additional episode. Yeah. Um, and uh, but if you feel like you're jonesing for more episodes and it's in between, go read the comments because <laughs> the people that watch this podcast are hysterical. Yeah, they really I mean, we laugh out loud yeah. reading it and subscribing to them. I can't even, I wouldn't even know where to begin, but they're so funny. And we're yeah. getting a lot of them now. Thank you. Yeah. And literally, you all helping us with that has doubled yeah. our subscription rate yeah. to our channel. It's yeah. doubled it. It's yeah. just the comments that are doing it. Yeah. I wish we had thought of that a year ago. <laughs> right. um, so thank you, thank you, thank you again. And we're going to yeah. ask you to keep doing because yeah. it's really, really helping us. It's yeah. helping our business. Plus, it's really been and our it's entertainment. hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> and you're entertaining the rest of the... And then, like, oh my gosh. Well, we can't even... It's Usually, no point to try to relay them. You have to go in no, and read them. Once, uh, what we were doing at first was Jennifer was answering all the ones on YouTube. And I was answering all the comments on Ravelry. But now I've had to pitch in and help on, yeah, on YouTube, there's a too. Lot. It's great. Plus, I'm reading them myself yeah. because... You were reading the, them anyway. Yes, just, I was reading yeah. them. But I didn't want to answer and then... Get it know, confused. Both of us, yeah. Yes. And somebody said <laughs> one day was... I, I actually now I I just got caught up on all my Ravelry ones too, but I don't. They said something about her accents. Yeah, I was like, what? We have accents. Of course <laughs> we, we do. Accents. I thought we lost our accents. Not after you've been back here eight years. No, you I guess it. not. I guess Say not. martini. Martini. Yeah, martini. Oh, oh. Irish. <laughs> Pirate. Yeah. Say say Santana the, the band. Santana. Santana. Oh. I, I don't even Serious. hear it. The force, <laughs> the <laughs> well, force is strong in that one. When, when I uh, when I moved to Montreal, a lot of people thought that I was originally from New England, but we, this is not a New England accent. No, well, they're just throw. They just don't know. Yeah, they're just thrown off. I was, I was like, oh no, that's not a New England. Yeah, it's something completely I think, different. I think but. I can do Santana, Santana, but I cannot get. Martini without or uh, yeah or barrette. I say barrette because that's what our mother says, and that's the worst ever. That's a South Shore Poor accent, mom. which is part of Nova Scotia, and I don't even know how to describe that one. <laughs> yeah, that's like a local, like a, they're a regional, a regional, a regional dialect. It was so funny because Ken is from Moncton, so they have their own issues. In <laughs> Like we all do. Yeah, yes, we, we all do. do. There's a lot of regional accents yeah. in the Maritimes. And uh, the Moncton one is uh, quite quite specific as well. And uh, But Ken and I, when we were first married, my mother is from the South Shore. So the South Shore has a very prominent accent. Which, which would be Lunenburg, Mahone Bay, yeah, that area if you've different. been to Nova Scotia. And I would say that a lot of accents now, because people are... Um, looking at media and so forth from other places have kind of smoothed out a little bit, but there are <laughs> pockets know. of, you know, so Ken and I have been married 33 years. So when we first got married before the internet and before all of that, Ken uh, and I went down to the Mahone Bay area where a lot of our family still lives. And there was these two old guys like literally like really old like 80 80 year olds sta- sitting on the porch in front of the store and they were talking and Ken said when we got in the car after we we uh, left the store I mean he said I can honestly say I didn't know what one word <laughs> they said was and it's I said a, really it's a cute I don't, <laughs> we love it though because our grandfather talked like that yeah. so it's adorable yeah yeah so, I mean a lot of the words are just wrong yeah <laughs> But there's also an accent at play. Yeah, but now I do that now too. Yeah. I see this. Yeah, it's carrying on. I don't tend to use the wrong word. but I, Well, we talked about this two episodes ago. Yeah. All right. We'll moving on. All right. So we'll we'll get into some local sayings later. Yeah. Good times. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's, what was that? Was that virtual knit That was virtual knit Yay. Yeah. Anyway, it was, we had someone from Trinidad yeah. this week. Um, oh, oh my gosh, we're having people from all the places that we want to visit. 
We're like, you're in Florida. <laughs> Looks so nice. <laughs> Scroll around. <laughs> Turn your camera around. <laughs> Let me see where you're behind. We had like Oklahoma, Iowa, like the whole Iowa. Oh. Oh, Iowa. That was just a slip. Um, <laughs> the, like, is that the, that's the Midwest. Very yeah. exciting. Yes. Yeah. What? <laughs> it's not? Yes, I, I just I like laughing. seeing people from places I've there never been. There was some kind of I missed. Oh, uh, the, Ohio, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ohio and Iowa? No, no, no. no. Where was I she? I don't know what the Buckeye State. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> That's Ohio. Okay. Anyway, two people from Ohio <laughs> got in a fight over the cheer, well, March Madness or something. Yeah, yeah. They cheer for different teams. Apparently. Yes. Penn State and whatever yeah. the Buckeyes are. Oh, I don't know. And we were like, I was trying looking for the mute button before I really got. <laughs> Quite heated. It was funny. By all means, comment, and we've totally probably screwed this up. And I'm sure at least Colleen from Cleveland is definitely watching. And Kale, and if you're watching, I don't know what yeah. the school two schools were, but it sounded like a little bit of a dust stop happening. <laughs> so we <laughs> tried to move them off of that. It seems that, uh, well, we know this is true, that Americans take their college football. Maybe much, it's a football. I'm thinking yeah. it was basketball, but it could be either. Yeah, don't we don't know. even know. We don't know. We, we're not sporty. We don't do the sports. We don't do the yeah, <laughs> we don't do sports thing. <laughs> uh, personally or watching it, not watching other people sportsing. <laughs> We've never been sportsy. No. No. Or sportif, as they would say in Quebec. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's not our thing. Anyway, oh, it was it good time to be quite important, so we kind of said, okay. <laughs> No more talking about sports. <laughs> Funny. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we don't have that kind of passion. No. Too much. Habs and Leafs fans, maybe. Yes. And tailgating is popular in the States. Yeah. Well, and barbecue. Like, sign me yeah. up. Yeah. But so, do you know what's funny? This is how unsportsy I am. <laughs> when I first moved to Toronto, I had a blast asking everybody why their team wasn't called the Maple Leaves. <laughs> <laughs> they like really didn't You're like a me. Real pain. You're a real pain. <laughs> like leaves. Yeah. It's the leaves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just love that. Yeah. So what I what my impression of tailgating was always what I saw like on football things or movies about football sure. or whatever barbecue and tailgating. But I when I went to Virginia for I went created for myself a little equestrian vacation when I first started riding and I went to Virginia to an equestrian area and they were doing tailgating at polo games oh <laughs> similar I'm sure <laughs> I, I was, was like I was like champagne really? we're gonna go tailgating <laughs> and they said yeah well, yeah we're gonna tailgate at the polo game and I said okay well I think it's a match I was yeah the polo, <laughs> so yeah, the polo match. Again. yeah I was pleasantly surprised at the tailgating at the polo match. Okay. What was that? What was it? It literally was champagne. Yeah. Charcuterie. I would like that. Cheese, oh, I would like cheese all of it. trays. Yeah. It was I was They're kidding themselves. Hats. I'm, yeah. I mm. had to buy a hat while I was down oh, here. Oh gosh. It was okay. lovely. Keep going, Virginia. We don't do tailgating <laughs> here. Well, actually on the island they do love to tailgate. Yes. <laughs> when they're driving. The kind where they run into the back of your car. <laughs> yes, on the highway. They yeah. love that. Yeah. But nothing and they're better pickup than a tailgate. I, my, my particular favorite is when they're so close, you actually can't see them in any of your mirrors. That's a, that's a common yeah. trick around here with yeah. those in pickups. Not social distancing. Yeah. Right. In the... Yeah. In their trucks. All right. Okay. Because God forbid you drive the speed limit. Yes. Our okay. Our tailgates a lot, too. Oh, really? Yeah. She was always an aggressive driver. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why do you have a neon sock kit update on here? Uh, because I think I forgot to take it okay. off. <laughs> There's no update. It's a co- we're <laughs> copy and paste okay, issue. Okay. We're making neon sock kits, but they're out of stock Just again. Just as fast as we can. Yeah. So we have to leave them out until like, we can get caught up or yeah. it would take too long to get them to you. So they will yeah. go back up, but yeah. we'll let you know. Yeah. All right. So we have whips. Yeah. Should I do my sad little, I can't, I'm sorry, I didn't, I said I didn't do what I said I was going to do. Flat rock. Yeah. So flat rock. Is it my imagination or does it look longer or it's exactly the no, same? No, I try stretching it out so oh. I can show it. It's the same. Um, 
you know, I'm not going to repeat my my mantra to try to get back to it, but it, the pattern launched today. Yes. Um, which means later in the shop update, I'll show the little color work kits that mm-hmm. we're selling that go along with this. Mm-hmm. So you pick your main color and then I've got the, uh, the color work part, like all of these uh, kitted up for you so that you don't have to buy full skeins of the, because there's nine colors in this thing. Yeah. Um, so it launched today. So congratulations to Jennifer, another beautiful pattern by yes. Jennifer Beal. And I am going to finish it. Mm-hmm. Every week I feel closer to getting back to it. Um, and if you look uh, on her page, the pattern is just gorgeous. Yeah, it's an it absolutely is. beautiful yeah. design. My Knit Night scarf, however, is coming right along. <laughs> this baby is uh, just growing. You know, so I I knit, I knit, I knit. Yeah. I knit it Knit Night. Yeah. I knit something. Yeah. Maybe I'll just work on it a bit while you're chatting. Sure. Yeah. You can't go wrong with this two by two no. scarf. Yeah. <laughs> right. Sure, so yeah. that's my whips. I'm humiliating myself. I really thought I might like be able to come up with a hat or oh, but the nylon or the elastic thread that I need for oh, my bikini is the on update, route. The update on the bikini. Yeah, it's okay, on route. You've been so tracking it. Have it's you? crochet. Yeah, I yeah. ordered it on Amazon. I got. Oh, it's crochet. That's even better. Yeah, I got 500 yards. I hope that's enough to make the itty bitty bitty teeny weeny starfish bikini. <laughs> <laughs> I think it will be. Well, I hope so. I just hope the elastic works. Yeah. That's my <laughs> my concern no, and that I can see. actually learn how to crochet. But I'll say, I'm, for all anybody who watches and crochets, because, I mean, I know crocheters get a little bit of the short stick a lot of the time. Yeah. I'm very excited to learn to crochet. Yes. I might become a crocheter, you never know. That's right. I might switch teams. Yeah. Well, crochet is fun. Yeah, it looks fun. Yeah. I mean, if you can make a starfish... What could be bad about it? <laughs> and you can make pineapple. And I tops. believe it goes faster than knitting. That's going to go really fast. Yeah. So, so I, I still haven't, I'm not 100% sure on my color yet either. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. Anyway, okay. so I maybe I'll have that started by next time. I'm full of dreams over here. Yeah. Okay. Think I'm gonna, big. I'm going to work on my Or start. small. <laughs> and you do your whip. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to start with the Cornwallis sweater because uh, this is the same swatch that I that I had done, and uh, we got questions about um, the yarn. So I, after I washed and blocked it, I actually didn't think that the cotton would change after I washed and blocked it. Hmm. But it actually because people asked about that, so this is good yes. feedback so for cotton. So I'm we're going to talk about cotton knit, okay. knitting for a minute, okay? Because Great. there's there's a few learnings that I can't. I love it for me. Yeah, okay. it's been so long since, as I said, that since I knit with cotton, and the last one wasn't a success. No, okay, that's the one that looked like the grocery right. bag. You mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. So. Um, the I mean, it still feels great and everything. I'm not happy with the fabric; it's too loose. So I was surprised after I picked it up that I, I really not happy with it. It's too loose. It feels really nice. And when you measured it, was it loose? Well, when I when it before I blocked it, it was on gauge. Right. After I blocked it, it's not on gauge. How many stitches did it go off? One stitch for four inches on both the garter and okay. the stripe. So I'm not happy. Not a huge amount, but not a huge amount, but I'm happy because I'm gonna knit it with a tighter needle. Yeah. And I um, that'll fix everything. That will fix everything. Somebody asked if it's pre-shrunk. My swatch didn't shrink; it got bigger. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm assuming that it's pre-shrunk. Mm-hmm. And somebody else asked about if it was color fast. Mm-hmm. So I soaked the swatch for a really long time in cold water. It was cold water, and when I went to check it, the water was just a little tingy pink. But it's not on your white. No. That's the important part. That's right. Yeah. Not enough to attach to the lighter color. Yes. So the the, the blue didn't move, hmm. but the red red is a hard... Red's tricky. Red yeah. is tricky. And like I said, it was just like a little tinge of pink, and I thought, oh no, but it didn't it didn't come out mm-hmm. on the white. So you can... And when we block, assured. we block straight cold water, none of this lukewarm business. Yes, I I'm used sure the... if you put lukewarm on that, it would have been much worse. And I, I don't... I put a little bit of eucalyptus in it, just because I like it. <sighs> mm, smells good. Mm-hmm. So that's the story of the swatch. So I am going to um, go down at least... It, I, this was knit in a 3.75 millimeter needle, which is what the pattern calls for. So I'm going to go down to at least a 3.5, but I think I might even do 3.25. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very loose for yeah. a cotton sweater. Like you can yeah. tell it would be dra- drapey, yeah. overly 
Yeah. Um, and a lot of people ordered the yarn for this project. Yes. We can tell by the proportion of um, yeah. skeins that you ordered. And the steel, if mm-hmm. you're waiting for steel, uh, there was a delay in us getting our shipment. So yeah. it is coming. Yeah. Um, and obviously you watch the podcast or you wouldn't have known to order it. So I hope you're watching again. Um, I don't think it'll be more than the two weeks that we typically ship out in. But if you're wondering, like, it's Rowan, why haven't they shipped it It's literally yet? on the boat. Yeah, it's yeah. on its way to us. Yeah. But uh, it yeah. didn't arrive with the rest of our stuff that we got mm-hmm. a couple days ago. Mm-hmm. So that's the delay there. So yeah. sorry. It was a very popular color, as it turns yeah. out. Everybody's waiting for it. Yeah. yeah. Some people did replace it with the sailor blue okay. as well. But uh, yeah. the steel is coming. Yeah. All right, so that's uh, the story on Cornwallis. I'm still really excited to start it, but I'm just going to make sure that I have a tighter That's going to be really fabric. fun. It's just going to be a joy to look down at that cheerful color yes. and the stripes and yes. stuff. And the st- it's so sharp yeah. with cotton. That's, yeah. yeah. That's the it's one beautiful. thing about wool is everything gets a little bit muty. Hazy. Yeah. Muty. muty. <laughs> yeah. This is just, uh, it's it's lovely. And it feels really nice. Yeah. And I can, when I was, I said this in the last podcast as well, when I was knitting with the, the yarn, it's very nice. Yeah. So, so and, this is rouge, white, and sailor blue. Yes. Okay. And um, somebody wrote in the comments that, uh, to watch it because it's quite um, straight. The sweater is quite straight. Right. There's no shaping. But... I will be doing shaping because my cocoa knits training. Right. Um, <laughs> somebody asked shaping. a question about waist shaping today too on Instagram. So oh, okay. I was hoping you would kind of explain a little bit about it when you go through your hinterland. What was the question? How do you add waist shaping? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no problem. <laughs> yeah, so we'll do that. All right. So Cornwallis. So I hope to get this started. I really want one of those. I am so... I'm. <laughs> I haven't had anything on the sweater I started four months ago, but I really want one of those sweaters. Yes. It's, I can just tell it's going to be... Imagine the colors I'd pick out. Uh-huh. Yeah. We and I'm, I'm wearing it. my Emma today because it's it's just like a hug, and I felt we needed it's a hug. freezing. And yeah. this cotton sweater, I think, is going to be just as comforting mm-hmm. and comfortable to wear. It's a beautiful yarn. Yeah. I'm putting it, it in the is. box, it's so soft and squ- Like, I just, I, yeah. we love the yarn. Yeah. We had never tried it before we got it in here. No. And uh, we're in love with it. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we've ordered all the colors now, right? Uh, yep, we have okay. all the colors. All the colors. Coming. Are- Summer least. and winter? Yeah. Like the whole line? Uh, well, all the colors that were on the shade card. Okay. I think I have all of them. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why I'm itchy right here. It's like I got bit by a mosquito. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. After mud season comes. Right. <laughs> bug, bug season. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So hinterland, <clears throat> I am just started the color work on the bottom of the sleeve. <gasps> Fun. Yeah. But I don't get too excited. Okay. There's only one stitch every oh. <laughs> nine. nine no. Okay. When you say so, just started, you really mean just yes, started. Yes, the first row. Of, okay. Uh, so just to remind people, it's... Um, Pine Forest and Thistle is my my alternate color. And um, so my sleeve, I just have the, so there's a, a miniature uh, section of this color work on the bottom of the sleeve, which is very exciting. And I've just, just started it. And I have my little, um, the, my Chiagu short needles in. And I can't say enough about I'm sorry you know I knit with double point needles I learned to knit circum like circles with double point needles then I did magic loop because that's all I knew about was magic loop and I thought that was great but the having the needles the right size to go around your your it it actually makes your knitting better because it's more even you're not fooling around I know there's people that probably love magic loop and think it's like the best thing ever um, we are not those people. <laughs> yeah, but you know, everybody, it's different for everybody. Yeah. So if I didn't have these needles the, that are like, I'll just call them the the right circumference needles. Right. <laughs> because you can get them. These are the, this is from the set with the interchangeable tips, but you can buy them as fixed circulars as well in 9 inch and 12 inch and six, 16 inch for whatever size circle you're doing. Um, I'm just, I'm... Hooked. We're sold. And in fact, if I couldn't do it um, like this on the circulars, I'll, I would go go dig out my double points and do it that yeah. way. Yeah. We're done with the magic. Loop. Yeah, we're done with it. I'm, I'm even doing this scarf on a pair of shorties from Knit Picks. But yeah. Um, obviously, the cables are not as nice as the Chiago cables. Yeah. But I do use these. Even to have yeah. these in short is nice. Yeah. Yeah. 
short tips. So um, what I'm doing, the modifications that I did to this is I added the waist shaping and I um, am making the sleeves a little bit longer. So people that have watched me knit sweaters already know that I like my sleeves to come down to the like the base of my thumb. So I am making the, the sleeves a little bit longer. And um, the modifications that we did uh, on the yoke to fit broad shoulders um, worked perfectly. So when the sleeve went now, I'm going to take a picture and uh, it'll be shown somewhere in this conversation <laughs> and uh, you'll see you'll see what a difference uh, it makes so now that the I know that when I block this sweater with our made with our yarn that I'm going to get about another inch on the top of the yoke and you see in the picture that the yoke looks a little bit tight <laughs> yeah it's a little bit squishy and you'll see in the picture that the um, side that has the sleeve attached to it now it actually pulls it down so it's already it's going to fit for sure and the waist shaping that i did is perfect so what i did is i literally um i took two stitches at a time from under each arm when i did the decreases so i did a knit two together and a slip slip knit and how many rows apart did you put your yes. decreases? I actually measured. I don't know how many rows it is, okay. but I, I did them about, I knit about two inches. Yeah. So I find like, because what you're going to do is you're going to take out under the arm two at a time, just like yeah. you said, and then you're going to add back in on the other side to make to a waist. To hip. Yeah. yeah. Um, I tend to leave at least eight rows in between decreases. Right. If you take it too sharp, it'll create like a Pucker. tuck. Yeah. And you don't want to tuck. You no. want it to be gradual. Right. Or you could do it by distance if you just wanted to do a measure. Yeah, so I yeah. just measured. Uh, I, I can't remember how for how many rows it was. So I measured the first one. And then I counted the, how many yeah. rows it was. And then but like in the this size row. of yarn, probably seven or eight rows is good. I tried yeah. doing it once in five rows. Too, and it too, looked to create too a, severe. a tuck. Yeah. yeah, too severe. And in the sleeves, you're doing the same thing to do the sleeve shaping. In this uh, pattern, it calls for um, every 12th row. Okay. So I'm doing 12 rows on the sleeves. But you want your waist to be a little bit more dramatic than that. Mm -hmm. And I took out... Um, two stitches for on all the decrease the decreases and I did um three sets of decreases to go down and then I did oh that's it yeah three okay. just three and then I did um two sets of decreases to do the hip because I have I don't really have you that. left the hip smaller you I didn't go back hip. up to the original stitch exactly okay. I, ha I do not have an hourglass figure right <laughs> not in None by any stretch of not a, not so. by any stretch of the imagination. So to keep it from looking um, baggy around the at the at the hip, I just it did two increases on, underneath, and um, that's that's all you, that's all I did. Okay, so and I hope that helps perfectly. give you an idea. It's actually yep. not that complicated. No, once you do the only it, place once. you can go wrong is if you lose track of how many you've taken out. Right, in which case count. Yes. But that's annoying. Yeah. Um, and or if you do them too close together and it creates a pucker. Yeah. Yeah. You have to. And I think that would probably depend a little bit on the yarn. Oh, too, definitely. Like looks. if it's a yeah. lace yarn, you're going to have to do a lot more than eight rows. Yes. Know, 16. You yeah. Know. So that's why I measured. Just gives you an idea. Yeah. yeah. I just measured the uh, thing. But I knew how I followed the schematic on the, um, the sweater. So I knew how long the body was going to be. And from my Coco Knits book, I knew how far under the underarm that the waist should be mm -hmm. when I did my measurements with the workshop. So I use those same measurements for this. Mm -hmm. And right now the coconuts books are out of stock temporarily. They're, right. They've are they been shipped. There's more, a whole case of them on its way to mm -hmm. us. Um, it's still not a bad idea to consider just getting that book and knitting something out of it. If you want to be a better shaper, I really, it's a really a it's like a master class in sweater construction. Yes. yes. Yeah. And I was talking to a customer on the phone this morning and she was saying the same thing. Yeah. But she's going to modify. She was talking about a pattern she's modifying and she says, I'm yeah. just going to use my coconuts uh, book to do it. So, and the other thing that, um, I have a mistake in this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yep. All right. Carry on. All right. You dropped a stitch? No, I don't know what I did. Okay. Fixing it. All it's right. All, good. all right. So I, uh, the other thing that they, they spend a bit of time on the coconuts book is talking about what shaped um, garments 
fit for what body shape. So a yoked sweater top down is definitely not <laughs> recommended for my body shape. So I want to preface what I'm about to say by saying that I love this pattern and it's very well written and it's very fun to do. It's not a, it's not really a great, <laughs> a great shape. So in the picture you'll see, because I'm quite top heavy with these square larger shoulders, a yoke sweater is knit from the top down is probably not the type of sweater that you shouldn't be your first sweater right. <laughs> sweater I guess but I really like it and I when I put it on just trying it on for my sizing I love the feel of it so I'm the yarn's beautiful yes so I'm just going for it even though it's not really suitable I might do um if I do another one I might uh, do a little bit more um, short row shaping it calls for short row shaping in this pattern but I might make the neck a little bit um a little bit lower in the front because you can see that it's it's really right at like right at my neck and having a short neck is not that's well, not necessarily the best look either I have to say that I love the top down raglan for our body type the raglan yeah not like you, a, not a yoke no one. Right. It gives you so much control. My one exception to that would be that Marled Mania, mm -hmm. which is technically a yoke construction, mm -hmm. but the way Stephen West designed it. Okay, I don't Wait, know. I think he's going to put, put that down. down. <laughs> so much for the two by two rib. Um, yeah. The way he designed it, it just gives so much that you can't yeah. really go wrong. Right. So that one turned out perfectly. Mm -hmm. And if anyone's wondering, I wear that sweater all the time and mm -hmm. I absolutely adore it. It's nice. I never did make it to a hockey game. Yeah. But right, that's okay because you know the sportsing. Yeah, it's okay. Take it or leave it. It looks it looks really. Nice. I don't go for the popcorn. <laughs> yeah. So the popcorn. <laughs> at the sportsing thing. At the sportsing thing, it's oh, all okay. about the popcorn. All right. So I'm I'm like I really I'm working on this a lot because I'm really enjoying knitting knitting it. This is not bless you. <laughs> just not a great sweater for me to like it doesn't it doesn't fit any of the rules that I'm supposed to do but I don't care it still looks lovely yeah I like it Ken really likes it on me yeah so I really the like color it is good yeah the color is fantastic the pattern is fun to do it's well written it's just and I don't I don't think it's and everybody like, needs one Jen Stein gas I think yeah it's really it's a nice uh it's a nice knit and I think the problem, we talk about our shoulders all the time, but I think the, the issue is there's also no slope to them. Like the, what does that mean? Well, some people's shoulders kind of gradually go down. Ours go out, straight out. Or mine do. I don't know. I don't know. I'd have I to think look mine are even straighter. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a, yeah, straight. Oh, I see. So where the, okay. Yeah. Cause, and Could it, make it a challenge with this even more so. Yes. Because the sweater is probably written sloped and ours are like... Ding. Well, there's... Yeah. We're there's like the little, tin man. <laughs> there's little increases. Right. Okay. And then over the shoulder... Then you go over the shoulder and... No, we go straight out. Yeah. It just goes... <laughs> just we way, don't know where we got that from. It's just the way we're built. Our mother. Yeah. Oh, our mother. Our grandmother. <laughs> we don't know okay. <laughs> all right so that's it so um and then somebody else asked a question about the helical knitting okay and they're having i'm gonna try a new thing i'm gonna put a link to the helical knitting tutorial right up here okay you're gonna it's try here it. somewhere yeah i'm gonna try a new thing everybody in YouTube. points to something but if you're watching it on tv it's not there well, I'm just saying, if you're watching it on iPad or mobile, there should yeah. be like a little bar right up here yeah. that says helical knitting tutorial. If everything tutorial. turned out properly. If it's not there, it's because I couldn't yeah. figure out how to do it. So since you're going to do that, I'll talk a little bit more detail. Okay. So in the helical knitting um, tutorial that I did, which I came from a suggestion from a, from a watcher, and I have to say was a revelation for me because I really hate it doing the alternate alternating skeins and now I was just like oh, okay no big deal yeah, it looks so perfect in that it's perfect and the um the question that I had yeah that came through on Ravelry was the um the knitter was wondering because she was running into an issue in the raglan sleeve because her helical where she slips the three stitches ended up being in the middle of the raglan increases or okay. decreases and she says I can't do slip three stitches because it's going to mess up my line my raglan line so um the truth is is that I'm not slipping three stitches anymore 
So even though that's the instructions in the in the tutorial, and I would suggest that you do it that way for the begin first with. to begin with, the key to the helical knitting is that you don't cross the yarns. That's what makes it work. Right. And it is tricky if you don't slip three stitches before you like you slip three stitches to get to the new yarn that you're gonna switch to. You're it's very easy to knit over where you were supposed to transition. And if you do that, you get an awful bump and then you discover it after you've knit halfway around and then you've got to back it all out. It's not very annoying. Speaking from experience, because I did that. You lost me, but I yeah. can go watch the tutorial. Yes. Yeah. The truth is you don't need to slip the three stitches. Now what I'm doing is I'm knitting all the way up to the stitch where the new yarn should start. I'm slipping just that stitch to get the yarn, the new yarn over on the right hand needle and then I'm continuing on with the new yarn. You can get oh, away with I that. Oh, I see how that works at the back. Oh, yes. okay. Ah, uh, okay. So you're not crossing the yarn. Right, I see. So the slipping of the three stitches. I get it. So yes. it's to take it from the left where you left off. Yes. And put it over here. Yes. And then you don't Start have to knitting. do old over new. Right. Ah, okay. Right, right. And, uh, but when you don't have that buffer of the two extra stitches plus the, uh, the last stitch, then you have a tendency to knit over. Right. And then you've just ruined you've your lost whole heel. Yeah, you've, you've lost, lost it. the benefit of right. helical knitting. All right, that's interesting. Okay, yes. I finally understand so, that now. <clears throat> so I'm cheating now on my own tutorial by just knitting to the stitch, then putting the stitch with the new yarn on it on the right-hand needle and keep going. And it works perfectly. No wonder that seems so easy. Okay, good. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Hope that helps. Yeah, hopefully it helps. And if you watch the tutorial, you'll know what we're talking yeah. about. So that was the Whips. the, quick, <laughs> the question, yeah. Okay, so shop update. Mm -hmm. So I am having I have a fun thing. Okay, so <laughs> it's actually a shawl cuff. Yeah. So explain about it, and then I'm gonna say how come it's unfair for you to show it like this. Okay. Well, I don't know how this works, and it comes with a pin as well. A stick. A stick. And so I you forgot can make, the stick. Yeah. So what would you do with the stick? You would just use this on its own and put the stick in it, like a yeah. regular brooch. Yeah, if you want just a shawl, yeah. a shawl pin. So with a you stick. can use it as a pin. Yeah, you can attach this lovely leather. Right. It comes in slate black and brown. Yeah, espresso. We is, so far have the slate in stock. Yeah, it's it's called uh, it's um, seagull. No, platinum nickel. Whatever. Yeah. So we, we're listing these. Mm -hmm. um, the other colors are on order. So if you think you would prefer espresso or black, they're on the way. But we started right. with this pewter? Pewter. Yes, pewter. it's pewter. Um, so then... That's the color of the band. Yeah. It's a gray band. Likewise, you can use it like this. Right? Is that... Like a shawl cuff. Like a shawl yeah. cuff. I yeah. hope you can see that. I don't really want to... So you would just put your shawl in through yeah. here. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. You cross the things and you the ends of your shawl and you wrap it around so it holds okay. it in place holds yeah. it in place like that so it comes with a stick you can wear it like this i have teeny tiny bone structure yeah that's what i was gonna say and i'm <laughs> loving it as a bracelet yeah <laughs> i mean my wrists are really small yeah like about three inches around <laughs> Like my wrist. And it's not the easiest to get it done up because the snap goes in underneath then. Yeah. So all I did was, I'll confess, I hope no one from Jewel is watching. I stretched this a teeny tiny bit just with my hand. Oh. And it fits perfectly and I love oh, it. I thought it looked a little bit loose. It's a little bit stiffer than that. When you Normally. First, yeah. But look, if you have teeny tiny wrists, it's gorgeous. Or you're four. But you're <laughs> and look, now it's getting loose. So I knew the yeah. leather would give a little bit. Yeah. Um. But put it on a normal size wrist. Well, it I won't, won't go be close. able to. Yeah, I just yours want... isn't exactly large either. No, I don't have uh, for the size. So for the, for the like, size of me, our mother will be like, I can make that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you could. Yeah. Does it fit? I'm gonna pinch, maybe, possibly. Yeah. You might get some skin in the snap. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Well, yeah, I can feel it. No. The, ow! Oh! <laughs> okay. <laughs> I almost got it. Oh. Now my hand, my hand is there. gonna fall off. Okay, so it is a little bit bigger, but I'm not sure that I like the the puff of okay. uh, but it creating works for a muffin me. top on your so wrist. I'm sure we have other petite viewers who might like it. 
as a bracelet and I'm loving and it. Don't mind. Oh, look, it yeah. created. <laughs> <laughs> you did that on purpose. Here, get your wrist in there. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. They are when beautiful. When I saw it, this is just what I wanted to do with it. Yeah, they're beautiful. So it's a three. Just a three filigree. and one. Yeah, all the scroll work on yeah. it, and it's quite heavy duty, and I love it. Yeah. We'd yeah. almost like second as a weapon if you had to. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty like substantial yeah. yeah all right so those okay. are listed now link is in the show notes right love it beautiful yes they're really nice and what else are we getting from jewel oh us uh, what is it it's a canadian exclusive well she sells it on uh she there you can buy it in the in the states okay but we're gonna be the first shop in canada to have, to it. have it yeah and it's a dragonfly brooch yes or shawl a stick. stick a dragonfly shawl stick yeah yeah. So we'll show a little, I mean, I'm sure you're looking at it right now. You yeah. know how this works. Yeah. <laughs> so these beautiful dragonfly shawl sticks, yeah. which I clearly haven't seen yet, but you're seeing now, yeah. Yeah. Um, are uh, are coming to our shop. Yeah. So they have not arrived yet. They'll probably, we'll probably have them listed for next episode. Right. Uh, but we just couldn't resist showing you them ahead of time because no. we were so excited no. to be the first Canadian store to have them. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're really excited about so it. So on the heels of our B success, which we're out of again, even though we said we had lots, did we order more? <laughs> yes, we have to order okay, more. Okay, we have to order more. Yeah. I think most people who wanted a B probably got a B. Yeah. Well, well I don't know. Because we now don't they're know, out of stock. Now they're out of stock again. Yeah. We can't keep up with our ordering. Like we, we tripled the order. Yeah. But still, it wasn't like we got dozens of no, them or no, anything. No. Anyway, we there'll be reorder. more bees. Yeah, and the we'll dragonflies, if you didn't get your bee, you might want to hold out for a dragonfly. Yeah. We do have monarch butterflies. We have lots of the monarch <laughs> butterfly ones for some reason. <laughs> I feel bad. They weren't such a big hit. When, when's monarch season? Yeah, I up? feel bad for the poor monarch butterflies. Gosh. The bees are taking over the yeah, show. Yeah, well, see, they provide our food and monarch butterflies, yeah. not so much. Just pretty to look at. Oh, yeah. No. They pollinate. That's true. That was yes. awful of me to say. Yes. Yes. It's butterflies awful. pollinate. The bo- butterflies super helpful too. <laughs> yeah. Should so. love a butterfly garden. <laughs> yeah. That is nice. <sighs> okay. So or a butterfly that. bush. Sorry. I used to have one of those. <laughs> those are nice. Purple they, butterfly and bush. And it attracts monarchs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They get a lot of monarchs in Ontario. Yeah. You need milkweed. Mm-hmm. You had milkweed. Did I? I think so. Probably. Yes. I must have. Yeah. I had the butterflies. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And we're just going to make another, just a little note about Rowan. Okay. Is that we're continuing, as we said, the Summer Light DK. We've got all the colors now. We're increasing our color selection on Kid Silkays, but there are a lot of colors of Kid Silkays. So every, it seems like every week we're placing an order, we're adding like four or five more colors. So if there's a color, your favorite color of Kid Silkays, if we don't already have it, just let us know because yeah. we'll put it on the next order. Yeah. Um, if there's I can't wait till winter to get some of their squishy winter stuff in. Yeah. And their winter book comes out. Yes. Yeah. Not or, that I want winter. That's awful. But yeah. I do like a nice fluffy squishy yarn. Mm-hmm. Since it was snowing this morning. That's true. It did here. snow here this so morning. It, we're not hoping for more winter. Right. But we can, we're, we're really enjoying having the Rowan product. Ugh. Yeah. yeah, it's great. And look, it's and good, the magazine is fantastic. Yeah, it's a good fit for there's us. There's knit, there's crochet. There's, yeah, and the Kim yeah. Hargraves book is beautiful. Yes. Yeah. So we're really loving it. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun for us. Yeah. Something a little bit different than what we make ourselves personally. Yeah. Okay, so um, we've been promising and haven't gotten around <laughs> to putting it in the podcast. So we're actually going to do, um, there was a third part to the gauge swatch tutorial. And this part is about how to adjust your, to your, whatever gauge it is that you get. Rather than trying to match your knitting to a certain gauge, how to adjust your pattern to fit your gauge that you're comfortable knit, yep. knitting. Or the gauge that you like for the fabric that you right. that you which have, we do all the which time. is what I'm going to do with this. Right, is I'm going to just knit with the until I get the, get fabric, the fabric that I want. want, and then I'm going to use the, the information from my swatch 
to get the pattern, like to right. fit, knit the size of pattern that, right. I, that I'm going to do. Um, the flat rock kit wasn't on here. So before okay. we go to this tutorial, sorry, false okay. alarm. Um, this was supposed to be part of the shop update. So just as yeah. a reminder, these are all the mini skeins you'll get if you order the flat work color work kit. Mm -hmm. This is just the color work part for the color work band at the top of the sweater. Mm -hmm. There are two versions of it depending on what size you're knitting. Most of the sizes I think fit in this 100 yard per color kit. Um, and then there's you have the option to order 200 yards per mm -hmm. color if you're knitting one of the larger sizes. Um, and Jennifer grades her patterns to quite a, a good mm -hmm. range of sizes. So there should be one in there for everybody. And uh, this is what it looks like. It's Both super fun so and nice. squishy. Yeah. Not yeah. like the neon rainbow, but a different kind yeah, of color scheme beautiful. that we did with the lace. Yeah. So uh, just forgot that. So now let's go over and watch the tutorial. Okay. Okay. We'll be back. Okay. So swatching and gauge figuring outing <laughs> episode three. So now we're going to use the information that we had in the last video. So if you recall when we counted our gauge um, on our swatch that we had, we ended up with 16 stitches equals four inches. I divided the number of stitches by the number of inches to find out how many stitches I have in one stitch, one inch of my knitting. And so four divided into 16 gives me four stitches per one inch of fabric that I was knitting. The row gauge on that swatch that I showed in the last episode was 28 rows equals four inches. When I divide 28 by four, you get seven rows equals one inch. So now the next big step, and you'll see that I have a calculator here. That's just a prop because <laughs> this is, so I just wanna, don't want anybody to be scared because now we're gonna do math, some math, easy math, but I'm gonna show you exactly how you do it. So my pattern that I have, I'm just gonna move this up. I had to write this out because I can't write upside down and you, to be, for you to be able to see. So the pattern, that um, I'm using has a pattern gauge of 20 stitches for four inches and 35 rows for four inches. So you can see that um, I like the fabric that I made in my gauge swatch. I like the yarn that I'm using, but my row gauge and, and stitch gauge doesn't match what the pattern calls for, but I wanna knit with what I had chosen instead. So it's very easy to do the calculation so that you can knit with the fabric that you want or knit the fabric that you want and fit it into the pattern. So if I do the same math on the pattern gauge as that I did for our swatch gauge, then I have 20 stitches divided by four inches and that actually gives me five stitches equals one inch. And I have 35 rows equals four inches, called four in the pattern. And if I do that, it doesn't come out to be a nice even number, but it's 8.75 rows equals one inch. In this case, this is a pattern for a sweater. So I'm not too uh, worried about that because most patterns, like I said, will give you more of a length knit until you reach a certain number of inches. But at least I have the information so I can use it if I want. So now I have to see uh, what the pattern says and I look at the schematic and I look at the, the measurements of the pattern and then I see how many, um, uh, what the first part of the pattern is the, the cast on. So this is not a real pattern by the way, it's all just kind of fictitious just so you get the idea of what you have to do. So um, because it's always done the same way. So I'm just going to move this up. So my fake pattern tells me to cast on 20, 200 stitches for the circumference. And my schematic tells me that um, this, let's say it's your chest measurement or uh, some measurement on the pattern equals 40 inches. So I know that according to this pattern, 200 stitches is going to give me 40 inches of fabric. So, um, and that makes sense because my gauge was um, 20 stitches. So um, five stitches per one inch, 20 stitches per four inch. And if I divide 200 stitches by five stitches for each inch of fabric, I get 40. So all of that makes, makes sense. So that's fine for the pattern, but what about my own gauge that I wanted to use, which is different. So my pattern tells me to cast on 200 stitches 
and the circumference of the project that I'm doing will be 40 inches. My project, the, the yarn that I want to use with my needle size that gives me the fabric that I want is four stitches per one inch. So the calculation is fairly straightforward. I have four stitches per one inch and I need to get 40 inches to get the circumference of the project that I'm doing. So 40 inches times four stitches equals 160 stitches. So because my gauge for my fabric is bigger than the gauge that the pattern was written for, I actually need less stitches to give me the width of the fabric that I, that I need. So what I do is I've got a couple, a couple choices. I can look at the pattern and see if the next size down happens to use 160 stitches for the pattern. If that's the case, I just knit the next size down. And that seems scary, but if you've done a good job on your blocking and your washing and your measuring, it has to work. It's just, it's just math, so it has to work. Likewise, if my gauge was the other way around and a lot tighter than the gauge that was called on the pattern, then I would do um, just do the same kind of uh, same kind of math, and I might have to go up a size on the pattern size. So it just depends on um, the difference. So this is very simplistic and kind of um, not a real a real pattern. As I said, I just kind of made it so that the math would work. But if you if you understand how this is done, then you should be able to convert. Um, this simple um, type of calculation, which is the most common probably, you should be able to um, do that, convert your patterns that way. So that's as much as I'm going to talk about that. Um, we can talk about uh, row gauge in some other, um, some other episodes and gets more complicated. And, but um, for now, this will get you um, solve most of the problems that you may have if your fabric is a little bit different. And we're back. Yeah, so hopefully that's helpful. It's not that long because it's really not real rocket science. Mm -hmm. You just need to be do a little bit of math and be careful about what you're thinking about. Just and give you the confidence to try it. Yeah, and the good news is, is that most of the time you can go along and see how many stitches that you need for the measurement that you want. There's a pattern size. Yeah that fits that yeah so you don't really need to like regrade the pattern now most of the time yeah yeah in fact I haven't yet come to a point where I have to say okay no, it's not just pick work. the clothes because I'm not even really sure that I would want to do that mm -mm. yeah anyway that so should help good. free you to try yeah our yarns with any pattern you want to make yeah I, I really uh somebody wrote a comment uh I think it was on Ravelry too this is ah I just love it that you guys make so many mistakes because it <laughs> confidence that it's all right if I make a mistake yeah yes. every knitter we makes learn, mistakes we learn a lot by the ripping out and redoing and you know yeah it's just part it's of it it's all good it's all knitting yeah yeah Okay, so I put on on here about local sayings because we we because we want said, more of them. Cause yeah, because so we funny. want more of them. So yeah. this is what this is going to be the theme for the comments. I hope okay. for this we one hope, because it's it hilarious. Works, it's hilarious. It okay, so there is a book, a Canadian of Canadian sayings because okay, every province yes. has their own sayings. Yeah. And the one that I remember the most, other than the ones that we say, is the one, one from Saskatchewan. 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 Okay, Saskatchewan. That's no, what? Saskatchewan. Who says that? The People Saskatchewan? from Saskatchewan? Oh, okay, so from Saskatchewan. <laughs> I don't want to say it wrong because we get upset when people say Newfoundland. Wrong. I know. I, yeah. I think they, well, it might not be exactly how I'm saying it, but they don't like the Juan thing. Oh, okay. It's Saskatchewan. I think. Okay. By all means. Hopefully that's not the version that they like. <laughs> Let us know. Like. I know it's not Saskatchewan okay. because Tara's mother is from there. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So Saskatchewan. <laughs> is, what they say is that Saskatchewan's so flat, you can watch your dog run away for a week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's with the hokey, hokey voice to go along with it? I don't know what the think, accent is like in Saskatchewan. We don't know either. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, no, sorry. I don't want to insult anybody, but that is one of my all-time favorite okay. sayings. I'm sure that's true. Yeah. So I alluded to the fact that there was a saying in the the Green Mile oh, that yeah. we thought was hilarious. Yeah. You can do that one. No, I don't know. What, I don't. I I 
I'm losing my voice all oh, of a sudden. No, 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 she got nervous. <laughs> no, what did she say? I think the cheese slid off that boy's cracker. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's a part in it where the guy is kind of goes numb. Oh, right. He deserves it. He and goes catatonic. Sna- yeah. yeah. They're snapping in front of his eyes. Yeah. And the guy, the prison guard says, I think the cheese just slid <laughs> off of his cracker. <laughs> That's funny. It's a really intense part of the movie. Yeah. So leave it to Stephen King. Yeah, that you're just burst out laughing. Really funny, and it, really... and it makes you want to eat cheese and crackers. Yeah, yes, I I felt like I wanted cheese and crackers right away. Yeah, there are so, so many local sayings yeah. around here. Some of them, and not for audiences. Okay, public but first, audience. our two favorites from the comments were, right. and this is a, apparently a very common one because like twenty people wrote it in. Oh, and they yeah. said instead of drag through a knot hole, yeah. we say drag through the hedge backwards. Yeah. Which is hilarious and yeah. more accurate for us because we usually do have a little bit of like hay. vegetation or something in our hair from Branches. being us feeding the hay. <laughs> so that would make a lot of sense for yeah. us. And then the other one was, you look like a day old calf in a hailstorm. Yeah, <laughs> which is pretty, like pretty, pretty pathetic. Pathetic. <laughs> Farmers will like that one yeah. if you haven't already heard anyway, of it. Anyway, if you have any others, but Please there's really this is not a local. Them below. Yeah. So this is not a local saying, which I use this saying all the time, but sometimes the best sometimes the best turn of phrases come when somebody tries to translate from another language. Oh boy. The saying. Where are you going with this? So there it's clean. <laughs> oh, okay. And it's appropriate. Okay, good. Because it's about knitting. Oh. So oh. we had <laughs> the when you work at L'Oreal, you often have ex pats coming and they move people around a lot and they love to move people around to different countries so um when they move people to a country you don't even have to speak the language that you're there they'll provide you with language lessons oh, that's stressful yeah, yeah language lessons and an interpreter if you're in management right um but it's really a good program so people right. learn learn a lot about the culture where they are and they learn a new language and everything wow so we in Canada often get expat. We we're, were getting expats, and we had um, a guy from Paris that came to manage one of the divisions of the of the thing, and he was speaking to me in English, and he was accusing me of doing something in a fun way. It was it was he was really funny. He was accusing me of doing something that I was denying that I did, and he said, "Don't try to deny it." He said, "I know you like I knit you." Which in French is a French from France, I think, is an expression. But I think it's really like if you if you know somebody like you knit them stitch by stitch and you, ripped it out six times and then yeah you would know them pretty well yeah I think it's a, I think it's a great saying yeah yeah I'm not gonna start, try to say it in French I used to know it in French but I can't do it right. now but I use it all the time <laughs> I think this is okay to say but it reminds me a little bit of that story of the the um the CFO who English wasn't their first language and instead of saying about the financial statements that it's right here on this piece of paper he said it's right here on this piece of sheet (laughs) 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 which didn't make the financial statement sound overly confidence building (laughs) but literally was correct it was there on the piece of sheet yes Yes. Yes. Well, you know. Oh well, close enough. We knew what he okay. meant. <laughs> we knew what he meant. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. mm-hmm. Good times. Yeah. All right. Good times. So okay. bring them on. Yeah. Oh, please. Yeah. We just Something love it. your grandfather used to say. Yeah. We'd love to hear it. Yeah. We love the colorful language. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Colorful turn of phrase. Yes. The okay. colorful turn of phrase. Okay. And now Good. you can all say... I know you like you knit. I, I knit, knit you, you which yeah. the people, knitters will know right. that you know the person pretty well. Yeah, that's cute. And then after he said that to me, I couldn't deny it anymore. I started laughing. He said, "See, mm-hmm. I probably was being a brat." He did know you. Something. Yeah. All right. Good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We're coming to the end. Oh, and I think our sister Michelle wants us to mention to everyone, in case you haven't seen in the comments, that she also had to work for her contacts. She had to babysit me for a summer. Apparently, that was so much worse than anything that could ever happen to a person at Burger King. Well, it wasn't worse. It became worse because you accused her of... They were 
were doing the sewer and water in the subdivision where we lived because they, everybody was still on a well. So they had these trenches dug everywhere and you accused her of trying to throw you into the trench. Do you know what's really funny? I don't know if Michelle probably doesn't even know this, but what I, I really wanted to like go down into the hole and play. And when she wouldn't let me, that was my revenge. Mm-hmm. I told her so about who's it, the that she tried now? to push me in the hole. Yeah. Really, I wanted to get in the hole and wasn't allowed. Uh-huh. You see how things happen? <laughs> I think it was something like that. I mean, I would have been four, I was there to witness so it. So I don't really remember, but it was something along those lines. Yeah. So, I had a creative imagination. You still do. It seemed like it would be more fun to be come up with a story hole. after your walk. Yeah, there was probably a ladder going down it. I don't know. Yeah. I think that might have been it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I'm sure Michelle will comment. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's getting to know our family very yeah. well. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Fiber Festival update. Yeah. So I just keep that there. Because, oh, okay. On we go. <laughs> yeah. On we go. So somebody uh, actually wrote uh, this morning because they had a bit, an Airbnb booked and the person that owns the Airbnb called them and t- canceled. So she wanted to know, do you know something that we, I don't know? Is there something we should know? There's actually absolutely been no... There's nothing you should know. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing that you're missing. <laughs> right. Um, it's the same as what we said before. We're uh, we're in a pretty good, good place here. Still, there hasn't been one person, thank goodness, that's been hospitalized with uh, COVID-19. Um, the cases were still at 26 cases. 23, 23 of recovered. them are recovered. Um, I think I just heard that they're going to allow fishing season to start because May 1st is a fishing st- season here. Recreational fishing season or commercial fishing season? I don't know. I just, oh, I just heard fishing, okay. so I'm not sure. It could be anything. So people in PEI, <laughs> don't take your advice from me. Falls into is. the category of sportsing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's a very important if it's recreational here. fishing, yeah. we have no idea. Yeah. If it's commercial fishing, we're more in tune. In tune. Yeah. yeah. But but you don't even know what kind of fishing it was, no. and I didn't hear the news. No. So we, that was super helpful. Yeah. There's some kind of fishing gonna be taking place <laughs> on May first on the island we of know Prince what, Edward. We don't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so um it seems uh there may be a little bit of room for optimism going forward and nobody has told us that we have to stop planning our fiber festival we're planning a shindig it's going to be a shindig and a half at this point which we will uh we sent out a the committee sent out a a note saying that we're obviously going to do some we're going to be safe so if it's not safe to do it it'll be canceled we're not going to do it but so far nobody has said and someone did ask about why ticket sales were delayed well we are delaying the ticket sales because we don't want to go through the agony of having to refund them all after so we're going to wait until there's a little more certainty before we do put the tickets up right um but uh there'll be lots of tickets available yes (laughs) so right now um we're working as a part a member of the committee we're working on things that are will be useful if it is delayed or canceled next year we're just building things like on the website and stuff like that that will be just reusable and um we have the vendors booked but uh there's we're just waiting to see what's what's happening but for the tickets opening opening the floodgates to sell all the tickets to workshops and all of that if it does turn out that it's not going to happen we don't want to be in a position where we're where we're returning money yeah. have people's money and having yeah. to return it so. and our knit night event for the monday after is still up on uh yeah. on event right as too. well yeah so. so there's still some tickets available for that on the 28th yeah yeah so uh so we're we're um cautiously optimistic at this point yeah. because things do seem to be going fairly well here yeah yeah all right So I think that's it for today. That's good. So we just want to reiterate how you can support us and help our podcast grow. The comments, like I said, are doubling our subscription rate, Mm -hmm. which is really a substantial Mm -hmm. boost um, to our business. So thank you. If you have anything to say to us whatsoever, please comment below. We really appreciate it. A lot of people did just do the little emoji trick. Totally cool. Yeah. Um, I do. We read every single one. We reply to every single one, Mm -hmm. except the ones that were sure are bots, like that Tom guy. He keeps writing in great content, dude. <laughs> Last time I wrote him back, I'm like, thanks, bot. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah. It's 
That's why you <laughs> engaged the bot. <laughs> engaged the bot, and then somehow YouTube moved it over to the unapproved list. So oh, I, really? I wasn't. Re- yeah. Oh, great. So I was like, That's they great. write. I get something from that bot like twice an episode. I'm like, thanks, yeah. dude. Yeah. Thanks, bot. Yeah. So, so even though I was like, I'm gonna reply. <laughs> Never know, just in case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you um, if you've made a comment and you don't see it in the published comments, sometimes uh, their YouTube is pretty careful about what they're automatically posting for public. So if you put a period in between two words, it, they think it's a website. Yeah. So but we check that too. We do check it, but yeah. we can't change it. No. Oh, okay. So, because uh, I tried to edit to put oh. a space in, and you can't, you oh, can't do okay. it. So some of them have been published with the. Okay. I try to click on it first just to make sure it doesn't go right anywhere crazy like okay. that. We wouldn't want to go, but uh, usually it's just a typo, so it's All right. uh, it's no problem. All right, and so comment, <laughs> thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. Sign up for the notifications. We so have a Ravelry group, all, and we have a Ravelry group, and uh, I'm mostly because it's like an attention span thing. I'm mostly on Twitter right now. That's why mm-hmm. I've been pushing the Twitter. Yeah, because you don't have to frame up a shot and do the I fussy you Instagram. Twitter. I did, but now it's my it's my jam. Oh, okay. Oh, because that person tweeted. It's hilarious. The word for what we all are feeling that I was trying to describe last episode is stir lazy. Instead oh, okay. of stir crazy, we're stir lazy. <laughs> we're lazy, <laughs> but we're not it's doing just, anything it's, about. It. Yeah, it's yeah. just. I mean, we're working really hard during the day, yeah. but at night, yeah. I would describe myself as stir lazy. Okay. Well, I think I'm actually just have no attention span whatsoever. Mm-hmm. I'm wandering about, like I said last time. Still. Yeah. Anyway, oh. that came off Twitter, and now tweets are kind of my jam. That's oh. about all I have the attention okay. span. For. I don't think I've. I think I've. I, I used to call it. I used to say that I was twitting, but I twitting. Yeah, <laughs> I've tweeted maybe four times. I think. No, um, um the, the Twitter is my friend right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's where I'm putting up little tiny things most every day, and I do do Instagram stories almost yes. every day. Yeah. But Instagram grid posts that require like a really nice photograph and some thought, mm-hmm. not super uh, no, <laughs> on top of really, that these we're days. Really busy, we're really busy, actually. Like, yeah. yeah, we're the farm is busy and the mill is busy. And right. you you guys have been supporting us. Yeah, great. It's really great. Like, yeah, the, we're happy yeah. to be busy. Yeah, yeah we're, we're happy to, to do. Busy. Yeah, keep keep us occupied. All right. For so sure. thank you, and we'll see you hopefully in a week. Yep. Okay. Bye. Bye.